what's up guys my name is cam and in this video today um, i wanted to talk a little bit about uh, like depression and my own depression and how i deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis so before i start um one i have no idea where this video is going to go i'm really just kind of talking this out essentially um, if there is one thing that i've learned it's that talking out loud with it uh, helps and the reason that i'm just doing a video is hopefully um you know, maybe some of my like coping mechanisms or tips or whatever could potentially help somebody else out there. Now, with that said, though, uh, please note, I'm not like a medical expert on any of this. Uh, so don't take anything that I say as like legitimate advice. Um, obviously, if you're having any issues, consult with a therapist or a psychiatrist or any other um, like medical doctor on this. Okay. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to get into like my full backstory behind everything. Um but just like a quick summary, uh, I'm 27 years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with depression six or seven years ago, I think now. Um, and I feel like I'm finally at a point now where I'm actually taking steps forward. And this is kind of a big deal because if you think about it, like, you know, being clinically depressed for six, seven years now um, and not doing anything about it really sucks. And it really, really takes a toll on just everything your mental health your physical health your like just everything and i'm sure a lot some people out there can relate to this um so again i feel like i'm finally in a spot where i can actually take steps forward um and it feels pretty good to be honest with you um i'm not it's not by no means like massive steps forward um i definitely still have multiple days out of the week that suck um but again it's it's progress and this is like the first time I think, like I said, in the last like seven years or so that I've actually felt and seen progress in myself. So um, that's big. It's obviously very good news for myself. Um, one of, I guess, the biggest things that has helped me over these last couple of months, uh, so it's probably within like the last three, four or five months or so that I've actually started to take steps forward, again, for the first time in like seven years probably, um, is to actually understand what is going on. So what I mean by that is uh, previously, like four or five years ago, um, I might have like a bad day. And um, in that bad day, like I could obviously feel and understand that I'm upset or I'm depressed or sad about something, right? And again, I, I like my depression does stem from something specific. Um, again, I'm not gonna get into it very much. So that whole entire thing, obviously, makes me, you know, made me sad, makes me sad, whatever. However, like I said, like four or five years ago, um, I would be having a bad day. And instead of like understanding what was going on mentally and understanding what was going on in my head, I would just constantly try to cover it up, right? So I'm sure a lot of you um, have experienced this or understand this or have seen this. Um, and thankfully, I've never went down any like terrible paths like for instance like I never did any like crazy drugs I never got into like drinking stuff like that um, a lot of people do unfortunately and that sucks um, but nonetheless like I had my own coping mechanisms okay and this is what I did again like four or five years ago so a lot of my depression stemmed from um, like loneliness and social anxiety I had severe horrible horrible social anxiety and um, my comfort zone essentially was to just be alone. That's like, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to be by myself. I wanted to be in my room. Um, and that was it. Like I was comfortable there. It was my happy place. Like that was it. Right. Now I'm sure you can see how this is or how this can kind of snowball into an issue years down the road. If I'm constantly, constantly retreating to being alone and not actually attacking what is causing my depression and helping, you know, my social anxiety and loneliness. Um, I was, again, just barricading myself in my room. My my coping mechanisms on top of barricading myself in my room were like video games. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube and TV, stuff like that, right? So, um, again, this, is, this was me like four or five years ago. And honestly, really up until like, probably up until COVID, I think, I might talk about that a little bit later, but COVID, like the whole lockdown was like my massive like breakdown essentially. Okay. So it was like four or five years of leading up, um, of me like essentially isolating myself and 
not talking to many people, not doing many things. I was just myself. Everything I, I, I did was by myself. Um, and it led up to, again, the whole COVID lockdown where it was, I mean, quite literally a full year where I did not do anything. I didn't hang out with people. I didn't talk to friends. I didn't do anything. And it was essentially, like I said, it was my breaking points. Like it was like, I, it hit me so hard. I was like, I need to do something to fix this. Right. So that's kind of that. That's where, that's really where something clicked in my head after um, like the whole lockdown thing, or I should say like during the lockdown, um, where I was like, I need to, I need to change. I need to do something. Okay. So um, move on like another year or so. Um, I guess from like where I'm currently at now, probably like four or five months ago um, is when I really started to um, like read more books. I was watching podcasts um, and I was essentially just educating myself on like the neurology and how the brain works and why we do the things that we do. And this was huge for me. Okay. So like I said, it's one thing to, to be sad and to know that you're sad, but it's another thing to understand why you're upset or what triggered it that day or, um, you know, how to fix whatever it is that's going on. Right. So this was huge for me and it is something I almost, I don't want to say obsessed over, but it was so intriguing to me and I loved learning about it. And that's just kind of what I devoted a lot of my time to was figuring out why essentially. So fast forward to where I am now, um, some of the coping mechanisms that I currently do, um, again, old coping mechanisms was like video games and YouTube, stuff like that. Any like stimulation, any like positive, like dopamine releasing stimulation, right? So now what I will do is, and I, I, I do admit, I do still watch a lot of YouTube, um, but instead of watching like streamers or video game, like YouTube stuff or just very pointless, like bull crap on YouTube, um, I'll watch like informative stuff, anything, anything like that can help me. So, um, again, anything about the brain and how it works, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I watch a lot of like fitness and health stuff on YouTube. Um, so that's like one, like very small shift in my coping mechanisms that have helped me was, um, I don't know, I guess, like I said, figuring out and learning why I do certain things or why all of us do certain things where it all stems from. Um, and thankfully it was just something that, again, I, I, I enjoyed learning about. So I was able to switch from video game YouTube to actual like educational YouTube, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so I don't know if that would necessarily help any of you in terms of your own coping mechanisms, but I will say the biggest tip that I can give is try the best you can to figure out why, figure out why you're doing the things that you're doing figure out why your certain day is a bad day, what triggered it, what caused it. If you don't know what the core root of your depression is, try to figure that out first. That's by far like the number one thing, in my opinion, again, that has helped me. Um, and then just kind of go from there, okay? It's very hard to progressively take steps forward um, if you're just kind of pushing your sadness under the rug and stacking like these dopamine releasing activities on top of it. Okay. Again, that's how a lot of people unfortunately get like addicted to like certain substances and drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. Um, so figure out why and what is causing it, I guess is what I'm trying to get at here. Um, let's see, I have a whole like script here that I wrote out, but I'm kind of just like talking at this point. Um, let me see. So I will give like a brief breakdown of like, um, like past um, experiences, like I said. Um, so the loneliness and social anxiety were two of like the biggest things for me. That was like the core of my depression, essentially. This is like, again, like six, seven years ago. Um, that has somewhat subsided now. I do still have like some issues with that stuff. Um, however, those two things have turned into um, like my current struggles, which are a lot of um, like negative self-talk, 
and unfortunately I have like a very poor relationship with myself mentally um, and again I'm at a point thankfully where I can understand that and I know that now um, I don't just kind of ignore it or I don't just continue to like essentially talk shit to myself in my head um, some days are better than others again some days I'll have like a really bad day where it's just you just can't help it right everything you do everything I say it's just like I don't know like I can't explain it like you just you just can't control it I don't know if that makes sense however like I said at the very 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 least at the end of the day like I understand why I'm doing it so again I keep coming back to this like tip one is understanding why because it's so so important um so yeah like I said the the social anxiety and the loneliness was like the biggest thing at first um and essentially like myself like barricading myself into my room playing video games not hanging out with anybody not talking to anybody um it led to like this massive breaking point where i was like holy shit like like i can't you know i can't keep doing this anymore so essentially what ended up happening um probably like i don't know four years ago or so um i finally got to a point where I felt like I was ready and that's another very important thing in my opinion um, it's hard to actually make change if you're if you're just physically and mentally not ready to do it okay so hopefully you don't fall into you know a situation where you're essentially never ready and you just like ride out your depression your entire life um, that would be terrible but at the same time like I understand not having the ability or not wanting to make change essentially um it's like a, I, I don't know i can't explain it it's just like a gut feeling that you just you just can't do anything right and some of you will argue like oh like just be more disciplined about it blah 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 um suck it up and make change it, it, it's easy to say but there's just i don't know i can't explain it there's just certain times where you just you just can't okay so push that aside hopefully you don't fall into a situation where you know you're like that your entire life okay um, thankfully for myself, um, I got to a point where I was like, I need to, and this is before the whole like COVID thing. Okay. So this is probably like four years ago now. I got to a point where, um, I was like, okay, like the social anxiety is terrible, right? I need to do something to fix it. Um, so I ended up getting a personal training certification and I applied, um, I got a job as a personal trainer in a gym that was a group training facility essentially. And basically what that was going to require me to do was talk in front of a lot of people and again this was beyond horrifying to me okay um this is like one of the biggest things i'm like like very proud of myself for doing because it was truly life-changing um to get into a job like this because again i was i was so barricaded my the job that i had before the personal training job i was um, a merchandiser for seven up so my job was literally i would just drive to a store like a Meyer, Kroger, any grocery store, whatever's around you. Um, I would go in the back, I would find our products and I would just stock our products only to the shelf. Um, and then I would get in my car, I would drive to the next store and so on, right? So I probably would do anywhere from like, I don't know, four to like seven stores in a given day. Nonetheless though, point being like, I would have headphones in the entire day and I just, I wouldn't talk to anybody. Like my job did not require me to talk to anybody. And in that time I loved it, like it was fucking perfect. Uh, but nonetheless, like I got to a point where I realized like I need to change something, right? This social anxiety thing is horrible. Like I don't, you know, I don't, I'm, uh, I'm so lonely all the time. Like I don't have friends, et cetera, et cetera. Like it kind of just, at some point it's going to topple over and you're going to like force yourself to change maybe. Um, I think that was just kind of a situ situation I got into. So again, I ended up getting this job as a personal trainer, as a group training, blah, blah, blah. And, and it was amazing, right? Probably probably took me legitimately about six months to actually get comfortable with it uh, but after that it helped my social anxiety so much and even till this day now like I, I give a hundred percent thanks to that job um, and yeah just forcing myself out of an uncomfortable situation sorry forcing myself out of a comfortable situation into a very 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 uncomfortable situation okay um, However, what ended up happening, that job was fine. Um, I, you know, obviously talked to people at the job. I had 
um, you know, good relationships with all of the clients. However, it didn't help anything outside of the job. Okay, so I was still going home. I was still very lonely at home. I didn't have any friends outside of work. Um, most of the people I trained were like 40s, 50s, and above, um, which is fine. But like, I'm not going to necessarily hang out with those people outside of work. If that makes sense. So this kind of this helped my depression a little bit. Um, and again, it kind of it, it helped a ton with the social anxiety. Um, but I was still very, very lonely. Um, so that really sucked. So moving forward, um, like, I don't know, two or three years later, that's when the whole like COVID thing hit. Okay. And just to keep in mind too, like I did have a small group of friends. Okay. I wasn't like quite literally sitting in my bedroom 24 seven all day, every single day. That's not, wasn't the case, but it was a, a very big majority of my time. And, um, so again, moving forward to like the COVID thing, this was legit. Like I literally did not have any more friends. Um, long story short, like the friend group that I did have, we had like a whole like breaking out thing. It was like three or four of us. Um, nonetheless, we didn't really talk anymore. So through COVID, 365 days, a full year, um, I did not do anything. And I probably hung out with like one, maybe two people, uh, like one or two times, okay? Not like one or two people multiple times, like a month or anything, like literally one person we hung out one day, another person I hung out with another day in the entire 365 day span. It was terrible, okay? And that was essentially like my rock bottom, I think. So um, what I ended up doing, again, it was all like a, it, it just like toppled over, okay? Like I was like, I have to, I have to do something to change this, okay? So what I ended up doing, um, I ended up going out and I got a second job and I got a second job in a restaurant. So I figured, you know, working in like a bar slash restaurant, like, you know, you're forced to talk to people, you're forced to meet people. And typically restaurants like this have a pretty tight knit friend group, essentially I would, you know, I assumed. Um, and to be honest, it did help a lot. Um, I had, and I do still currently work there. Um, like I developed friends, nothing like super, super close. Um, but I, you know, engage with people um, at work. I have fun at work. You know, we talk, we laugh, whatever. But I do still have an issue outside of work. I'm still very, um, like, sheltered, I guess you could say, outside of work. Um, I have a very, very hard time actually going out of the house and um, hanging out with people or meeting new people outside of, you know, like in my free time. Um, so that's kind of where, like, my current struggles are. Um, but again, forcing myself into these uncomfortable situations was like by far and none, like the most helpful thing, I guess, um, I'm trying to say. Um, and it sucks because like I said, the only way you can really do that is if you're actually ready to do it, if that makes sense. Um, because like I said earlier, there's just, there's just times where you just can't, like you just, you just you're so like stuck and you just don't want to do anything and you're so demotivated and it sucks it's terrible and unfortunately like for myself I got to a point where um like I said it just like essentially toppled over and full on 100% consumed me and I was like holy shit I, I gotta get out of this so that was kind of my situation leading up to that um but like I said I'm now in like this current situation where the social anxiety is, I wouldn't say fully gone, um, but it's like 90% gone. Like I am very comfortable actually going out and talking to new people, okay? But what it did develop, um, and again, what I'm currently kind of going through is I have a very hard time, like I said, doing things outside of work. And I guess maintaining friendships and relationships, like this all screwed up my like social skills so much that I just, it, it gets very uncomfortable when I actually get close to somebody. And it's almost like an automatic like retreat moment. Like if I like, if I, if I become friends with somebody at work, I have a hard time um, like talking to them outside of work or hanging out with them outside of work because I don't really know. Like, I guess that's just kind of what I'm getting at here is I don't really know why, you know? And, um, that's essentially what I'm trying to work on at this current moment. 
Um, but like I said, it's I've taken massive steps, um, and the I don't really know where I'm getting at this video. I'm just kind of rambling on now. I guess if I were to give like um, the tips that have helped me get to the point where I'm at now, right? So again, I kind of got rid of the social anxiety. I partially got rid of some of like the loneliness or whatever, um, but it developed into this like negative self talk that I have with myself um, in terms of like, I get mad at myself about not being able to, um, I don't know, fix my situation, if that makes sense. Like, like, I'm at work, I, I talk to these people at work, we're friends, you know, they like mention how, you know, they invite me out places or, um, you know, they mention, I don't know anything about like hanging out outside of work or doing whatever. And I come home and I just, I, I get this feeling where it's just, I don't know, I just, I like, I, I just can't maintain a friendship, I guess. I can't develop like a real friendship, I think. Um, and then it turns into, like I said, this whole like negative self-talk where um, I just talk absolutely poorly about myself and I like reflect on like years past and whatever. So that's just overall the current situation, right? The tips, I guess, that I'm trying to give or the things that have helped me. So dating back again, like four or five years, um, forcing myself into uncomfortable situations uh, when I was ready. Okay, that's the key. Um, I think the only way you can really do it is when you're ready or if what happened in my situation, like that whole toppling over, like going over the top thing, uh, like it just consumed me so much that I was like, I have to get out of this. Um, so making yourself uncomfortable by far um, and then figuring out the absolute core of what is causing, um, what was causing my depression. And again, when I was ready, just absolutely attacking um, whatever that was, okay? And then again, essentially just learning about what was going on, why I was acting the way I was, how my brain was like, you know, making me essentially do certain things. And like I said before, you're gonna have days where you just can't do anything, right? You just lay in bed and you're just like, shit, like, you know, I'm feeling crappy. Um, you know, again, in my instance, like somebody invited me out to do something and I just, I just can't do it. Like I just, for whatever reason, I just, I just can't do it. Right. And then you feel crappy about yourself, but at the very, very, very least, I somewhat understand like what is going on and why I'm acting the way that I'm acting. Um, so that kind of helps. I think, I hope that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I guess basically what I'm saying is that was my past, my depression, and what it was, and how I kind of fixed it. Um, however, it turned into something else, and where I'm currently at, and how I'm currently trying to work through um, like my current struggles, I suppose. Um, again, I told you at the beginning of this video, I had no idea where this video was gonna go, um, but again, it does help to talk about it sometimes, and hopefully, maybe, some of these tips will help a little bit. Um, if not, I would love for somebody to comment down below like what has helped them. Uh, because like I said, it's if you, if you have any sort of, and I understand that a lot of depression is very different. People get depression from different things. They react differently. Um, they do different, they have different coping mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if anybody is like in a similar situation that I was, um, I would love to hear like what you do uh, to cope with it on a daily basis. I would love to hear, um, you know, what has helped you, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I guess one last thing that I will add here. So this is like my last little thing on this um, like note sheet that I have. Um, it sounds kind of contradicting that I say, you know, if somebody invites me to go out and do something, um, that I just lay in bed and I don't force myself to get up and go hang out with them, or I don't force myself to get up and do something, right? Because, you know, at the same time, I'm sitting here saying like, you have to, f you have to force yourself into very uncomfortable situations if you want to get better, right? Again, that's at least that is what's helped me. 
However, the reason I can sit here and say that I'm taking positive steps is because before, um, I mean, I would go seven out of seven days doing nothing. I would go seven out of seven days just putting a blanket over top of whatever was making me sad, um, just constantly layering more and more things on to just hopefully make me feel better in that moment. But all in all, I mean, at the end of the day, the blankets would just fall off and the depression would resurface and it was there, right? There was no, I, was, I wasn't doing anything at the time to help my situation. Now, I might go, you know, three days or four days where I'm um, essentially not doing anything. I might have three days where I'm like, shit, like I just can't, I just can't do it. I don't want to do it. Um, but at the same time, like three or four days, I might actually be forcing myself to make one small change or two small changes or one big change or something. So again, I think summing this whole entire thing up, um, I don't really know what the point of this video was. Like I said, I was just kind of talking because talking helps a lot. So that's number one. Number two is figuring out what is causing my depression in my instance. Um, and getting to the core root of it um, and then understanding essentially how my brain is like processing everything and what I am doing to cope with it. Um, even if it's like a wrong coping me mechanism, I'm still fully aware that what I'm currently doing is not helping my situation, okay? That was something I was never doing before. If I like sit down and play video games to help cope with my situation, I'm like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm choosing to do this, but I know it's not going to help, right? Again, I'm not doing this every single time though. Um, it's something that I'll only do like three or four out of seven days. Again, these numbers are just very like, I don't know, basic. Um, and then the final thing is when you are ready um, or when you do just for whatever reason, get in that mood, um, full on attack, whatever it is that is causing your depression and just do something to make you uncomfortable because I promise you it's gonna suck horribly in the moment of doing it. It's gonna be really, really hard to get yourself out of bed or to get yourself out of the house to go do whatever it is that you have to do. But it's all like, it's like a stacking process. Like you have to you have to do it once in order to do it a second time, in order to do it a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time and so on. And that's why I'm trying to kind of stress like, like <clears throat> I might not be in a perfect situation now where you know, seven out of seven days, I'm doing everything perfectly, right? Because that's not the case. Like it's just, it's just not the case yet, right? Um, but hopefully this turns into, you know, three or four days, um, I do the right thing. And then maybe a couple months down, five days, I do the right thing. Six days, I do the right thing. And you eventually kind of stack onto these, um, you know, uncomfortable situations uh, that uh, hopefully eventually make you I don't know, get you like completely out of like whatever your depressing state is. Okay. So I really hope that makes sense. Like I said, I don't know what the point of this video was. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about my situation. Um, because again, it does help to talk. If you have not talked with anybody about it, I highly recommend, um, doing so, or even like writing your own thoughts down or talking out loud or making a video like this or something, because it's one thing to talk in your head. Uh, it's a whole nother thing to talk out loud and to talk with somebody about it. So, um, I mean, yeah, hopefully, like I said, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully this helped somewhat. Um, if you have any tips and tricks of yourself, how you deal with it on a daily basis, I would love to hear it. Um, if you disagree with anything that I have, or if you would suggest me changing anything, I would love to hear that as well. Um, and other than that, uh, yeah. Hope your day is well and I'll see you guys next time.